I am a journalist by training, teacher by profession, and was a legislator by accident. <laughs> so uh, that was that. That precisely summarizes my profile. Well, I am asked to speak on uh, uh, the higher education teachers as public intellectuals. Why do I choose this topic? Because this is something which I have been doing all through my academic life. I joined Usmania University in 1988. Since then, I have been articulating the public concerns, participating in the political contestation on a wide range of issues. I was part of the India's glorious tradition of argumentation in whatever limited way I can. And uh, well, this was possible only because I was a teacher in the university. If I were in a government, I would have been expelled right, uh, right in the first two years only. Uh, so many people surprisingly ask, "Sir, you are part of the, you are paid by government. How are you so critical of the prime minister, chief ministers?" Well, I said, "I am not part of the government. I am part of the university, which is certainly not part of the government." In fact, there are dozen Supreme Court judgments to tell that a university teacher is not part of government. Why was it so created? The government pays you the salaries. I am sure university earns very little. So why we in the teachers of higher education are supposed to be have an autonomous mind? Why do we have this autonomous mind? We should we have this autonomous mind? Because society develops, prospers through intellectual churning. Societies advance through continuous interrogation. A society that stops to interrogate, a society that stops to articulate, will have a slow death. This is the world over, we have several experiences. So therefore, there should be somebody who needs to interrogate, who needs to question, who needs to articulate the concerns of the society and no one else except the teachers in higher education can do. That is precisely the reason we are endowed with intellectual autonomy. So my question is, to what extent we are doing that? We, I mean, not the group here, we as teachers of higher education. And what are the hindrances? What are the constraints to playing this role of an argumentative mind, of an interrogative mind? Why do we need to question? So Ramila Tapa says, not a historian, Question or not to question can never be the question. Question or not to question can never be the question. If you look at the history of science, Newton, the parable goes, that Newton was sitting under an apple tree, an apple fell on him. If I were there, I would have seen for two more apples. So, but Newton did not see that. Newton thought differently. He asked an interesting, rather curious question. Why should this, this apple fall down? If my son or my daughter asked this question, perhaps I would rush to a psychiatrist. Why my child is asking this such kind of questions? Where will the apple fall? It will obviously fall down. Why will it go up? But that very question led to the discovery of Newton's law of gravitation. I am sure there are teachers in science, physics here, where I, my knowledge of physics was more than three decades old. I, I stopped studying physics in 83, four decades. But without Newton's law of gravitation and Kepler's laws of planetary motion, you cannot imagine space science. Am I right? So why this, this, this simple question led to the, one of the most exciting discoveries of science called Newton's law of motion? It applies even to politics. It applies to even to everything. Jagan Mohan Reddy got 151 seats, reduced to 11. 
TDP you got which got 23 seats went up to 164. Is it not Newton's the law of third law of motion? <laughs> so it is simple. If I apply physics to politics, it's a Newton's law of third law of motion. Am I right? So that is how the beauty. Somebody asked me a question. Well, I asked a question. I get too many newspapers, so I am not an exact example. I asked a student, a, 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 my neighbor, which newspaper do you buy? He said, I buy Inado. I asked the other person, the other our neighbor in the apartment, he said, I buy the Hindu. I asked them, why do you buy Inado or why do you buy Hindu? Why did you not think of buying another newspaper? There was no answer from them. Then I was reminded of the Newton's first law of motion. Everybody continues to be in the state of rest or of uniform motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. So everybody, every person continues to read the Hindu or Inadu with their reading unless there is some external pressure. Am I right? That should explain the behavior of a newspaper customer. So where did this knowledge come from? This knowledge is an integration of law, science with journalism. But are we accepting this interdisciplinary character? Just try to Google when Rabindranath Tagore met Albert Einstein, the greatest mind in physics means greatest heart in literature. So what kind of conversation this might have created? Are our universities allowing, are our colleges allowing such interdisciplinary interaction? You should tell me, I'll speak for a couple of minutes, then I think I was told that you are a very interactive group, uh, quite surprising and quite pleasant also. So I will, we will have more discussion, but are we really allowing this? So the world is increasingly becoming interdisciplinary, am I right? Yes. I went to MIT in 2013. I saw a board called Suresh Subra, I think, if I remember properly. He later became the Carnegie Mellon president. He was the Dean Faculty of Engineering at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, world's topmost school. He is a mechanical engineering studying malaria. He was studying the mechanical properties of red blood corpuscles. So a mechanical engineer studying malaria. If I ask this in my university, I will be seen as a madman. So that is how the world is. My own life out of experience, I am a graduate in electronics and postgraduate in journalism, doctorate in political science and taught economics at Birla Institute of Technology and Sciences for four years when I was a legislator. Is there any link between electronics and economics? I never had a formal degree in economics. The only mistake I did was when I studied political science was to teach my wife when she wrote MA political science exam. I was never a student of political science. So somebody may say, sir, you might have failed in science, so shifted to social sciences. Certainly not. <laughs> I have I had a distinction in electronics. Absolutely not. I was a state second in physics. I was state third in chemistry in intermediate. So no, absolutely nothing. Out of choice, I moved from electronics to economics with a seamless integration. But are our universities allow this? Absolutely not. Interestingly, in the same building, I spoke on international trade issues to officers of central services, including Indian economic services. But I was never invited by my own economics department in Arts College during my three and a half decades of service. Three and a half decades, not one day. So somebody who can address officers of Indian economic services, not an ordinary office, services, am I right? So this is the silos in which we live in. So the first thing if we want to be a public intellectual is break these silos. For that matter, what, what do you mean by public intellectual? Public intellectual, Ramila Thapa defines, and that is the most acceptable definition across the world, is somebody who has some standing in their world, in their world of their own. 
if you are a teacher in higher education, you should have some intellectual standard. So when you say something, the society listens to you with respect. And ask fundamental questions, seek explanations for public actions. So we seek explanations from the authorities, institutions of authority. So that is the role of a public intellectual. If the government of India comes out with one nation, one election, there should be hundred university teachers articulating their position. I am not question, telling they should oppose it. I leave it to their own intellectual conscience. But I am sure somebody should have a deliberation. How many of our colleges and universities debated on this one nation, one election. When Telangana government was coming out with white papers after white papers, how many colleges and universities debated on that? How many colleges and universities came out, of, uh, came out with an alternative document to how to double the Telangana economy by another two years, in within five years? <coughs> so I have not seen, if you, if, please enlighten me if you have seen. I want a research paper or a thesis or a document or a compilation of seminar papers on the challenges before the Telangana economy and how to double Telangana economy in next five years. I am sure this is the most important priority of the state government. But are we reflecting? So when we do not reflect, why should society sustain and provide continuous fiscal support to us? That's a fundamental question. If universities cannot find original answers to the question that the society continuously rise, what, why, so what the problems of society, the questions in the existing knowledge, so that is the role of a public intellectual. Unfortunately, this is not being done because the kind of the first problem which I said is, we live in intellectual silos with each discipline not interacting with the other. That is the first problem. Second problem, there is a syllabi specific, exam oriented, curriculum specific, exam oriented, classroom confined education. We are not moving away from that. So the classroom confined syllabi specific examination oriented allows the student only to think mechanically. Yesterday I saw an interesting post from by my son on LinkedIn. Recently he is, is a, a senior manager at Google in US. He, he, he has a, a daughter, so I had a granddaughter of, who is one year old. So she, they came to India recently. So obviously we taught her fan edi, she immediately started showing. So we enjoyed for over two months. So every day morning, tali fan edi, she immediately showed. Tali fan edi, she immediately showed. So after going to US, my son asked her, tali fan edi, she immediately showed and there is no fan. In America, there are no ceiling fans, am I right? So then he got it out, he, post, he, he, he posted on LinkedIn. Why did this little kid was showing top even when there is no fan. Apadaka me vanukuna na manavaral in the intelligent too. Idi put a one year loan a fan gutuva to the ankuna. Adi fan gutuva tle. Fan a gutuva to the America to be together. Fan lay the nazi lay the karan elgar. But what did she learn? She only learned something. So fan a di ante pike judal. Adokata let's come here. Am I right? This is the problem with the machine learning. <laughs> this is the problem with the, with the chat GPT. This is the problem with artificial learning. This is the problem with Google Gemini. Because that is trained on a set of data. So it will only answer based on the set of data on which it trained. It doesn't have a, a general intelligence to understand and react based on the change in reality. So uh, it's like my granddaughter who did not differentiate between India and America. So she did not, she did not realize the change in reality. Ceiling fan, Bharat Desha, 
సీలింగ్ ఫ్యాన్లు లేని అమెరికా కొచ్చాను అన్నది దానికి అర్థం కాలే అందువల్ల ఫ్యాన్ ఏది అంటే అది పైకి చూపెడుతుంది సో దిస్ ఇస్ దిస్ ఇస్ వసో ఇన్ ది వెన్ ఆర్టిఫిషియల్ ఇంటెలిజెన్స్ అండ్ మెషిన్ లెర్నింగ్ హ్యాస్ సచ్ ఎ బిగ్ డెఫిషియన్సీ అవర్ యూనివర్సిటీ రియల్ లెర్నింగ్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో లైక్ దాట్ సో వీ ఆర్ ఇంక్రీజింగ్లీ బికమింగ్ మెకానికల్ వీ ఆర్ ఇంక్రీజింగ్లీ బికమింగ్ a discarded learning model which all of us continue to discard in school education we even even today we say we do not allow children to ask questions uh, i always give this example when a child saw stars twinkling in the sky the child get fascinated and comes to mother and asks amma i saw stars twinkling on the sky why do they twinkle mother doesn't know but every woman in this in, in this great country believes that her husband is the most intelligent being on earth <laughs> unfortunately husband don't believe that i'm sure husband do not believe that but and women believe it men don't believe it <laughs> so my mommy says atali go to dad and ask as if dad is albert einstein's incarnation <laughs> so the child goes to dad and ask dad dad i saw the stars twinkling in the sky why do they twinkle then the dad says don't you have the homework because dad doesn't know the answer he doesn't know the answer he doesn't, he doesn't want to display his ignorance so the child scared and goes to the teacher and next day morning she asks the teacher why do stars twinkle in the sky that teacher says it's not there in your syllabi it won't come in your examination that the end of the matter she will never ask questions so are we allowing children in schools to question unfortunately we are not the environment at least my understanding if it is if there is an exception i appreciate i am only referring to a general prevalence situation i am generally prevalent situation so generally prevalent situation is it is still a monotonous speech model of teaching which we are involved in so there is no application of the knowledge to the concrete condition when i went to mit i went to student lab i was surprised to see mini robots produced by students as a part of the project work compare it with the project works produced in the jirak centers of amir pet <laughs> i am sure the teachers in engineering who are here if they know very well there are project reports of many engineering colleges produced in the jirak centers of amir pet so amir pet was found its place even in economist uh, the kind of training the the uh, well uh, when economist can publish on amir pet what else can we do think about so this is the world which we are living in so unless we create universities and colleges as centers which make additions to knowledge which involve in the original thinking then comes asking critical adversarial questions when a government policy comes when the free rtc bus ride was introduced by telangana government show me if i am wrong correct me how many social science departments whether economics public administration sociology have done studies on how did this free rtc bus ride make a difference in the lives of women six months have gone so please update me I, i want to know who has to tell the world that this scheme is good or bad there is a political contestation somebody says it's good somebody says it's bad somebody says it's a wasteful expenditure if somebody says it's a free bees but i would like to know did it make a difference in the life of the women so i i want an academic study an empirical study that analyzes the correlation between free rtc bus ride and the socio economic status of women but i am uh, so i have not seen media you should if in your colleges and university if it has been done please share it with me i will be fascinated to tell it to the world so because if you inform me i will inform lakhs of people has an advantage with me so the problem here is 
my simple question is who has to tell the world that whether this public policy measure is right or wrong if we the academicians do not indulge in a probe of a particular policy so this is what abhijit benerjee did the nobel prize winner came all the way from from mit to study in rajasthan and it, this is where he introduced the concept of rap, randomized clinical trials to economics am i right if there is a teacher in economics please correct me if i am wrong he has applied the science knowledge of science called clinical trials to economics so for an immunization program he maintained he created two groups of people one group was asked to administer immunization uh, vaccination to the children another group was offered a kg of pulses or an half kg of salt and this revealed that the second group has accepted immunization embrace immunization much more enthusiastically finding the link between s s a a a dole or handout or a subsidy whatever you may call and the challenge of making universal immunization should we call this subsidy or should we call this development so this raises a fundamental question in economics so if you give a kg of pulses to motivate more women to bring children to immunization center i am sure it is certainly not a subsidy but it is a development input so how did this conclusion come from this conclusion has come from from a field study of a nobel prize winning economist who was awarded nobel prize for his path breaking theory of applying randomized clinical trials to the world of economics so nobody thinks that clinical trials can be done in economics so this is how you integrate knowledge in one stream to the knowledge in another stream and apply that knowledge to the reality in the world that's the reason a one great thinker said theory is that which emerges out of practice and which enriches the practice so it should emerge from the practice and it should enrich the practice unfortunately there is an eminent disconnect between the world of theory and world of practice well in the name of practice we are talking about only skills i do agree skills are required we need expansion in higher education we need equity in higher education we need excellence in higher education and obviously we need employability in higher education but if you really want to make a child employable you don't need to bring them to a degree college or university send them to iti or polytechnic they will teach skills better than better than colleges and universities so what is the difference between a skill and knowledge many people use it at the interchangeability they use it almost like synonyms i'll give you a small example from my own field of journalism i will teach them a skill of writing excellently a, a new story or a feature story this is skill i will impart to my students an ability to write or speak on a given subject very eloquently a very prolific writing skill i will teach them but that is not the end of life this can be used to to cover a fashion show this can be used to cover travels of tribals so what determines that journalist orientation so the skill is the same skill to report on lavish exhibition in park ayat and skill to report on on a government school in hyderabad in a very poor condition the skill is the same but the result is not the same a lavish fashion show in five star hotel reported in in a very uh, talented way or the condition of a public school in hyderabad city depriving proper education to the marginalized each both require a similar skill but both the but the impact of the both is not the same 
I, as a, as a conscientious human being, I would love to, I love to see my children, my students, reporting more on the on the on, on the on the government schools rather than fashion shows. I'm not denying that fashion shows are not required. So this is the knowledge. So knowledge is the differentiates between what is good and what is bad for the society. If you are, if I am teaching marketing. Marketing a low-cost puri water purifying device and, ma and marketing a new brand of liquor requires a similar skill, requires a similar marketing skill. But if, you, if that skill is employed, you will have a different result altogether. So the result is not the same. So therefore the knowledge is something which distinguishes between what is good and what is bad. Knowledge is something which results in the greater advancement of a particular thing. So we are actually using skill and knowledge in a similar manner. So universities need to import skills, but they are more centers of ideas. They are the places where the world is debated. The American universities are witnessing an intense debate on Israel attack and Gaza. At least more than 50 universities have seen massive student and teacher protests in the, on the campuses talking about the history of Palestine, talking about the Israel occupation of Palestine. So show me how many universities in our state have witnessed this. Well, do we not have history? Our universities have seen the Telangana movement. Our universities have seen left and ultra-left movements. Our universities and colleges have seen Vande Matra movement. Telangana is a history of movements in campuses. And Telangana, which has a history of movement on campuses, doesn't agitate, is not agitated by Israel war on Gaza. I don't mind somebody supporting Israel also. I am not telling everybody should support Palestine. That is not the point. But at least somebody should discuss this. Should the university department should discuss, students should discuss, faculty should discuss. Are we discussing the jobless economic growth? Are we discuss, discussing the fall in private consumption? Are we discussing the increased household debt? Are we discussing how the lower savings is contributing to higher economic growth. Today what we are witnessing is an economic growth phenomenon which is fueled not by surplus money but by savings to the people. So people are cutting down their savings to spend and this is certainly not an healthy indicator of economic growth. So this and if you look at the consumption story, lavish luxury consumption is increasing. Villa sales, big apartment sales are rising, but not the affordable houses. Budget car sales are not rising, but the SUVs and posh cars sales are increasing. So what does this indicate? It indicates a grotesque inequalities in society, which is resulting in a, a boom in the elite consumption and with, without the mass consumption increasing. Such an economic growth is absolutely unsustainable. But are we discussing this on our campuses? And forget about the campuses. Are we discussing with the society at large? To conclude, before I invite discussion, we not only debate in our classroom, we not only debate in our college, we not only debate on campus, it is our responsibility to debate in society. How do we debate in society? Well. The technology gives a wonderful opportunity. My media friends always tell, sir, we are extremely finding it difficult to get articulating teachers who speak on issues. So when I when the budget comes, in a uh, in, in, in couple of weeks you will have the union budget, how many economics teachers are ready to analyze the budget the moment budget presentation is completed? Well, I asked a professor of economics, he said, can you give me a one-week time? I said, in our media, one week is a very big time. Finance minister will forget that she has presented the budget. 
It doesn't happen like that. It happens. You have to analyze the budget on the same day, same time. You may write a research paper after 15 days. You may write a research paper after three months. But that doesn't work with the media. So how do we articulate our mind? Well, we have the media. You have the social media. Well, I do agree. Media also do not bother about serious things. That is the reason I stopped going for debates quite some time. So I am only speaking and posting on my YouTube. So believe me, when I started my YouTube in 2018, January, I had two and a half lakh views with hardly thousand subscribers. Now I have two crore views a month. It is a mind-boggling number. Two crore views a month with nine lakh forty-five thousand subscribers. So believe me. Pardon? <laughs> not only you have one, and I uh, will tell you the secret also. I am not worried whether I get my pension or not. <laughs> so you can understand. <laughs> I am simply not worried whether I get my pension or not. So what, how this explains, I am sure all of you can do it. Well, all of you can do it. May not be with an equal level of success. You may have more success, you may have less success. But the very spirit of doing it matters. Forget about the success. So this is the advantage. So we ask to reflect. We have to reflect. So when citizenship amendment act comes, I want teachers to reflect. If some invention, artificial intelligence has come, can artificial intelligence become artificial general intelligence? And can it even invade human intelligence? Well, I want an engineering teacher to discuss. So this is something every field. You may be in any domain, you may be in any domain, any, any, any domain of knowledge, the society needs erudition from you. The society needs knowledge from you. So the, the society will be a better society if it is informed society. And who should inform, if not we, the, the privileged teachers of higher education, who are endowed with the capability and insight to understand and comprehend complex phenomena. An ordinary person will not have either capability or, or opportunity to analyze and understand the complex social, economic and scientific phenomena. We have that kind of abilities and if we are silent, the society, the history will not forgive us. So we need to make our voices heard loud and clear. So that is precisely the role of a public intellectual. So I stop here to invite questions because I started with the word that we will not allow questions in the classroom. Well, it is not a typical classroom. Some of you may be more enlightened and more experienced than me. But still I stop here and, and invite you to speak. Thank you. Yeah, I worked with Balagopal and uh, I'm also claim as an activist. But as you said, the autonomy is not there, sir, in the universities. Any comment we do, uh, immediately the outside forces have come. I have practically faced this problem. And uh, uh, especially I, in Karimnagar, where I come from. So uh, yeah, even our teaching... Karim Nagar, sir, Shatavana University. So even uh, teaching faculty do not understand and they become more problem for you that uh, we, you are immediately outlined as an extremist, uh, you know, <laughs> unlawful. Yes, uh, yes <laughs> so, I do yeah, agree. Yeah. To do a simple exercise, open my channel and read the comments which I don't read. You will see I, how... I follow you, sir. Just... Yeah, I follow you, so, sir. <laughs> so... I always tell, Treta Yugamulo, Sita Matalini Anumanicharu. You are Mimalini Anumanichara. I am saying... Treta Yugamulo, Aapadaki value system in the degenerate kale. So, Sakshatu Sita Matalini Anumanichara, Gada Manam in Thandi. Dwapar Yugamulo, Sri Krishna Day Nila Pannadal Edur Kunnada, Gada. Okay, they will let me tell, I will tell you, I will tell you my own experience. I wrote a piece in Times of India, in 1980, 90s. When Nedrumali Janardha Reddy was the chief minister, that was the time when there was a massive agitation against privatization of engineering education. I am sure you remember. 
So, the Times of India editorial, uh, I sent an article. I am sure you will know, we don't write headlines. It is the sub-editor who is sitting on the desk will write the headline. So, he gave the headline, glad to see him go. So, Chief Minister photo with a headline, glad to see him go. I was a university teacher with hardly 5 or 6 years of experience. A telephone call came from Chief Minister's office to my Vice Chancellor. My Vice Chancellor immediately called me and said, why do you do take risk? Do you want to lose job? CMO is very angry. Then I said, sir, please tell the CMO to suspend me. <laughs> if you are a good friend of me, please tell the Chief Minister's office to immediately suspend me. Or you take action on me. That is the only way I can build a house in Jubilee Hills, I said. <laughs> then I said, what, what are you talking? I said, simple. Sir, if you suspend me, I will fight in Supreme Court, High Court. After 30 years, I will get all my salaries back. And till these 30 years, I will live with, uh, with some difficulty, but I will live. Because I am a teacher in the university, nothing can be done to me. I have a freedom to speak. I am independent of the government. So, I am, I, well, I did not resign when I contested as an MLC. If I were in government, I had to resign, am I right? Yes. So, I just applied for leave and went. Well, there are state, non-state actors attack you. Even today, people abuse me like left, right and centre. Mm -hmm. Well, you should always think, unless you are popular, nobody will ask, abuse you. Am I right? <laughs> so, this is a part of life. A, a constable, a, 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 a traffic constable, cannot escape from dust allergy. A medical practitioner cannot insulate from hepatitis B. A teacher cannot escape from throat infection. So, we, the, if we are a public intellectuals, we cannot insulate totally from the public outcry. And I am sure you should be prepared for that. If you are driving on the roads, can you come, can you assure me with 100% guarantee that there will not be any fatal accident. Can anybody guarantee? That doesn't mean we don't go on the roads. Am I right? Sir, let's face it. That's the moment you face it, I'm sure the threat will recede. If you are scared, the threat will loom large. If we revolt, the threat will recede. Nothing happened to me. I am I myself is an example. Nothing happened to me in my 40 years. Well, nothing happened to me even today. But I cannot guarantee that nothing will happen to me. <laughs> I cannot guarantee. So, well, that's a part of life. That's a part of life and we should be ready to take take it with all, uh, all commitment. Yes. Sir, my name is uh, Karunakar, sir. I am from JDC Gadwal. So, what is your opinion on semester system, sir? Well, I, uh, so many of these semester system are now the new proposal with the UDC has introduced having admissions twice a year. Are you referring to that or are you referring to the semester system? You can talk about I am sure you might have read in the newspapers, yes, today's newspapers, <laughs> UDC. Well, scientifically speaking, semester system is good. I believe it. Provided what is scientifically good need not be practically good. There is a difference between the two. Internal assessment is a scientifically good, but is proving to be bad because students come and say, Ni intlakal istam aura mark lu, emai ta dra, bhagupatan ni tantam kortam, ni jitam asta leda, am I right? So abuses are hurled on you for not giving marks. As a result, we are giving marks in the range of 90 to 100 percent for no fault of our own, am I right? So, well, is internal assessment good? Certainly good. A teacher who taught is the right person to evaluate. Theoretically correct. Practically, it is not correct. So, similarly, semester system is theoretically correct. Instead of testing at the end of a long year, if you test it in between, I am sure the knowledge can be retained more effi effi efficiently. And the world over, there is a semester, there are trimester also. So, but the practical realities you should tell. Similarly, biannual uh, admissions twice a year, theoretically good. But when you have such a huge teacher scarcity, 
So how can you manage with dual ambitions? So uh, and uh, well, it, uh, it, they are simply aping the Western models of education. But what is there in Harvard or MIT or Stanford? Do not hold good in Usmani or Kakati or Satavana. Precisely the reason we don't have that kind of an atmosphere here. Am I right? That kind of atmosphere here, that kind of infrastructure here, that kind of uh, you have a bureaucratic uh, uh, rigmarole, you are not allowed to take decisions. So there are a lot of hindrances, a lot of constraints. So any policy measure, you have to think, evaluate from a point of view of its scientific uh, validity and also the practical consequence. Good morning, sir. I am Dr. Shyam from KDC Anmokunda, sir. I was student of you, sir, from 97 to 99, journalism. Sir, I am asking one question. Recently, Ravent Reddy commented on Guru class. The Guru class, no need to Guru class, uh, it is impacting on society very badly. Can you comment on this, sir, please? Well, I don't say, I don't think he said no need for Guru class. Right, I, I, small correction. Well, it is true that there is world over studies reveal that a student uh, will be better equipped and better confident if he is grown up in his own social milieu. Well, with his parents, with his neighbors, he will understand the social reality better. It is again the same question. What is scientifically true need not be practically true. Scientifically, I also believe that non-residential schooling is much better than residential. I have not admitted my children till 10th class into any residential school. So the reason is, well, you the kind of human relation, the kind of societal uh, interaction is a real world of education. Well, my ideas are shaped by the fact that my neighbor was also a watchman's son. My, cl my classmate is a watchman's son. Another my classmate is a washerman's daughter. So this, this created an egalitarian outlook in me. But my children are not educated in that environment. I am educated in a multi-class environment where my children are not educated in the multi-class environment. They were, they were educated in a rather homogeneous uh, schooling with uh, of a particular level of social and economic class re, uh, studies. So theoretically, when a child gets exposed to the world around him, the family, the community, the social milieu, I think the child's intellectual acumen gets sharpened. The child's creative and emotional intelligence increases. It is not just IQ, it is also EQ which is important. So that is the reason you, a poor man who finds very difficult to eke out a livelihood does not commit a suicide, but an IIT student by failing in a semester commits suicide. So what is the problem? The problem is your IIT education did not give you the kind of a confidence. So that is the basic difference, but practical when it comes to practical. So you have a, a practical situation where a two, three children, father, mother stays in a single room. I went to Adagutta school. I have seen this personally. Three children, parents, grandparents live in one room. How can that child study? And the father comes every night in a drunken mood and beats the mother. So can the child study? So can the child study? And my daughter went for a 10th class examination. Night 12 o'clock, her mother gave her boost. Her brother uh, gave a kiss on the forehead and said, Thali, write the issue all the best. Father dropped her on a, in a car. Grandfather greeted her. This is the environment in which the child, my daughter went to write 10th class exam. But there is a poor man's daughter who spent all through the night looking at our mother beaten by father, completely come under drunken condition. Next day morning nothing to eat but goes to the school to write the exam. The examination paper is the same. Can the performance be the same? Can the result be the same? So this is the social reality. So, if you remove the child 
from that extremely handicapped social reality and keep them in a residential environment, the child will have unhindered access to education. So, I am telling you the both sides. What is practically true need not be, what is theoretically true need not be practically true. So, I am not a votary of residential education from a point of view of academics, but I cannot rule out the importance of residential education given the precarious social reality in which our children live in. So, perhaps we know we need the both. We need residential schools, we need semi-residential schools, we need strong and robust government schools with day scholar students. So, one cannot be at the cost of the other because we have a multiple realities staring at you. You have a diverse landscape which we are catering to. Well, uh, I, I, I am a strong believer in multidisciplinary education because that increases your creative thinking. I told at the, in the initial exam examples also. So, I am a student of mathematics. Believe me, I am, my political analysis has been sharpened by mathematical understanding. If I am not a student of mathematics, perhaps my political understanding would have not been so empirical, so analytical. So, my analytical skills are honed by my background in mathematics. So, well, that does not mean somebody who does not have a background in mathematics cannot do that. You can perhaps sometimes overcome the background also. So, there are, uh, I was like many of you, I was also a student of Telugu medium till 7th class, studied in a normal Jila Parshe school and a Singharini school, government schools. Well, I have nothing prevented me from writing in every newspaper of this country. I wrote for Hindustan Times, Hindu, Economic Times, Indian Express, very recently the Financial Times, London has also quoted me. Nothing prevented me coming from a very remote backward district of Adilabad. So, everything is a disadvantaged background. Son of an ordinary school teacher who lived in a, uh, in a, in a uh, normal house, not even a pakka house. So, this is how we, if, if people like you and me have lived. But we, we still learn. We still learn the hard way. So, the way you integrate different disciplines matter. So, I am sure it will be a much better understanding of knowledge if it is multidisciplinary. That does not mean I am not, I am against a single discipline knowledge. But it always helps you have a multidisciplinary knowledge. So, this regimentalized watertight compartment system should be abolished. So, there can be a free interaction between different disciplines to the extent possible. To the extent possible, well, and that our mind is also like that. Our mind is also like that. You may be a medic, medic, medical scholar, but you can be good at literature. I took my son when he was studying electronics to a person called Professor Raji Reddy. Some of you might have heard. He was the chancellor of our IIIT and one of the doyens of electronics. He was the ed uh, dean of robotics at the Carnegie Mellon University. Won the ma uh, uh, highest award in electronics equivalent to the Nobel Prize from the President of the United States. This man studied in Jilla Parsha School in Sri Kalhasti. And when I took my son to in, uh, so that he will get some uh, gnan in electronics. <laughs> so, when I introduced my son, the professor said, please wait for 10, 5 minutes. I will just come. He went into the room. My son was so curiously waiting what electronics book that he will bring in. He brought two small booklets. One Vemana Shatakam, the other is Sumati Shatakam. <laughs> he gave these two to my son. He rendu jadu. You will be a much better human being, he said. <laughs> so, electronics is a prana jadu coach. So, that is how the world is. Sir, so, so the, uh, so the, the, the link between literature and knowledge, literature and knowledge, that in the thesis, the interconnection between literature and science will make you 
I mean, uh, Steve Jobs, I was uh, uh, the man who made wonders in the world of electronics. He, I was uh, listening to his lecture at Stanford. You can also get it on the YouTube. He, he was, uh, he lost a job. So, he was, he learned calligraphy. So, the art of writing later, am I right? So, this helped him to create the wonderful keyboard of uh, Apple. The beautiful letters on the Apple keyboard. So, that, so this is the world, one knowledge will not deny the other knowledge. So, I am sure the world multidisciplinary knowledge is always stronger, more creative, more intellectually vibrant than a single discipline knowledge. Sir, uh, I am Vidya sir, sir, here sir, yeah. from Agriculture University. Yeah. Actually sir, uh, from uh, years pass by, pass by, the resources and the whatever the budget the, the government is allocating for the universities uh, very minimal and the what is called the uh, uh, postings notification there is no notification but the intake of the students have been uh, increasing year by year sir so less resources more number of students and more uh, uh, work i mean in this particular situation how the uh, the, the faculty has to uh, come up well and do justice for their job sir uh, well i totally agree with you I totally agree with you, there is inadequate budget, inadequate resources, but what were the resources available to C. V. Raman when he got the Nobel Prize? What are the resources available to C. V. Raman when he created Raman effect that brought him the Nobel Prize? What were the resources available to Aryabhatta when he, he, when he, did, when he did research? What were the resources available to Potana when he wrote ba ba Bhagavata? So I totally agree with you on one side that you need resources, you need better budget, you need faculty. There is absolutely no dispute on it and as a teacher in higher education, I will never dispute it. But that cannot be the pretext for the kind of intellectual bankruptcy that is pervading our system. I am not talking about agriculture university. I am talking about in general. I do not find students in the classroom in Arts College. Why should government spend money to recruit more teachers? This is my fundamental question. I may sound bizarre, but now I am retired, I, I can be courageously tell this. <laughs> well, even when I am not retired also, I told this, but I am telling. My simple question, when there are no students in the class, why should government recruit more professors and waste money? When there are no uh, uh, high standard quality research output. So why should why should teachers why should uh, more more money should be spent on research? So it is not the money that that create knowledge. It is the mind that creates knowledge. Money only facilitates. Money cannot replace the mind. So the money can never replace the mind. I'll tell you one example. As a part of the Rusa. Uh, what that scheme for higher education, my university got more than a crore rupees to create a digital education ecosystem where classes are kept in videos, online, digital video. One crore is spent not producing a single video. I have produced thousands of videos without spending single money, single rupee. Without spending single rupee, I have produced thousands of videos. So what, what, what prevented? So when you spent crores of rupees, created studios, cameras, editing equipment, furniture, everything, but not a single video has come out. I produce at least minimum of 10 videos every day. So what is that prevent? You don't need any infrastructure. Have your own mobile phone, which everybody has. Open the mobile phone, speak and upload it. Do you really require money? In fact, you earn money. You don't require money. So you earn money. I can assure you, you will earn more money than your salary. So what prevented? So where is the problem with the budget here? The problem is with the leadership. The problem is the vision. I'll tell you another example. My university 
knowing fully well that I have been so successful in the world of digital media, did not, did not even invite me for a second to share my experiences. I am sitting in arts college, the administrative building is one for long distance, the vice chancellor did not even have time to, to take opinion from a person who is ready to offer without any, any charge. So then uh, what should we do this? Is this bankruptcy of ideas or is the problem of money? Here is a person who is ready to offer my services without taking even a single pie from my un university because I born, I, I was, I am here today because of my own university. Well, I don't take money from my university. But university doesn't use you. So this is the problem with the bankruptcy of ideas who are at the top, not the money. So I, I, if, the, if my university asked me, I would have created a wonderful digital infrastructure by the, for the university, which would have been almost like a digital university. It, I would have created an online university, but never. Never the university thought that here is a man who has already produced thousands of videos and, and has crores of views. Here is somebody who can help you, they did not bother. What should I do then? So this is so, I totally agree with you, resources do matter. But more than resources, ideas matter. Sir. Well, that you need to invite me for another lecture. <laughs> that is a long topic. Well, I think... Sir, uh, related to that only, yeah. one more question. How to inculcate uh, research uh, attitude in the students? First, there should be research attitude in the faculty. <laughs> Am I right? Frankly, <laughs> am I right? So, let us... How many teachers have written uh, in leading publications? And what is the incentive? The problem with the system again... We have a worst kind of bureaucracy. I'll tell you, I was invited to deliver lectures at National Academy of Administration, Mussoorie, for IAS probationers. I'm sure you will accept that it is certainly a honor, not now, 20 years ago. Today it is not a honor for me, perhaps. But 20 years ago, it was a very big honor to me. And uh, today's GHMC Commissioner Ronald Rose was my student. Uh, at, at a Missouri. There are many people like that. When I applied, that it, and I was going in summer. I was going in summer. No need for leave. But I am sure as a, as a disciplined teacher, I wrote a letter to my administration to inform them for a simple permission. Technically, when I go out of station, I should inform. Do you know what my giant registrar asked? The first question he asked, in this thoughts are double class school. How much are you paid? That fellow did not even have a courtesy to congratulate. And he is only worried about 150 rupees which I am paid for the class at that time. <laughs> I said with the similar knowledge and abilities, I will can earn lakhs of rupees in real estate if I am a real estate broker. <laughs> rather than a university teacher, am I right? I am sure all of you agree with my ability to speak in English, Telugu, Hindi. Ability to convince people with my articulation. I am sure I would have earned 50 crores in real estate. Financial district law, Pajakral, Nudaj Punaku. Am I right? And that is the system which, which operates. And this is the worst kind of a system that operates. I, as I told you, I wrote in Economic Times, I wrote in Hindustan Times. I was quoted by international media, but I was denied a promotion for senior professor. Do you know why? I was not, I did not write in Tarnaka General. <laughs> so, if I pay 10,000, all my articles will be published with back dates. I can assure you with back dates and I will get the promotion. I refuse to pay 10,000 and get the promotion and I am losing 10,000 every month for that in my pension. But I, I took a principal stand, I will not manipulate. If you recognize my professional contribution, you give it to me, otherwise don't give. Unfortunately, for a senior professor's promotion in surgery, it is not the 100 successful transplant, heart transplant you have done. Even if you have not done a single heart transplant, but if you write on history of transplant surgery, 
<laughs> two articles, then you are selected for senior professor. What is this system? If somebody has done 100 transplant surgeries, heart transplant, is he senior professor or somebody who has not even touched heart any time, who is a heartless creature and wrote an article on history of transplant surgery and gets a promotion. So what is this nonsense? If you are a teacher in MBA, if you are a Google's corporate advisor, you, are not, you will not get promotion. You have to get an article published in Nallakunta Journal of Management <laughs> called Peer Review Journal. I don't know what is that peer. <laughs> well, this is how if, you, if the academic institutions live like this, where is the intellectual motivation? But still people like us uh, did not bother because we had much, much higher social recognition than what my university recognizes. So I don't mind I, I, writing in Economic Times, writing in Hindustan Times, writing in the Hindu is much more difficult, million times difficult than writing in so-called general. Writing in Economic and Political Weekly, it is many times difficult. They don't know this. So, I have written, with all humility I am telling, I have written more articles than all the journalism teachers in India put together. In India put together, I am on record telling this. I have written more articles than all the journalism teachers in India. All the journalism teachers who have written in newspapers. I have commented for hours and hours on television, live television. Well, I am a journalism teacher. If I am a some other subject, I can understand. So, if I am a teacher in journalism and my journalistic contribution is not recognized. I was an editor while working as a professor, editor of a newspaper, I am a working editor. Till 3 o'clock I used to be in university, after 3 I used to be in newspaper. I was an editor for 4, 3 years. I was an editor in chief for a TV channel. I run the one of the most popular YouTube. So, but still I am not recognized for a senior professor because I did not have an article in Tarnaka Journal and Nalakuta Journal, <laughs> which are peer review. Economic Times is not peer review. Hindustan Times is not peer review. You, I, but I, I, do, I am not worried. I simply pity the university for this kind of a system. I absolutely no regret. I, 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 I tell this as a piece of humor to everybody. Because I, it would have been easy for me to spend 10,000 once in a time, lifetime and got the same article published in some journal with a back date and I would have become a senior professor. So, well, that is how the system is. But no regret, you stand for your own values, you don't stand for somebody's certificate. So, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. I am Vijay Kumar, sir, from here. Yeah. Uh, Principal Government Degree College, Kamma Reddy. So, I have around 1500 students in my college. And uh, the attendance is like uh, 200 to 250. And uh, then I tried to, uh, at the time of examination, I can see no, those 1500. See very strong. Regularly. Many strangers in the examination hall. Yes. So I tried to at address the issues. When I interacted, they said they are taking coaching somewhere else or they are attending coaching classes for competitive examination. Then I started, I changed my timings uh, for a half a day. Uh, so that they can uh, do a part-time job in the afternoon hours and also introduce some computer coaching and uh, competitive coaching in my college. Still, I can see only marginally 20 to 30 percent I can uh, see uh, improvement. What else can be done to improve it more than uh, 50 percent well, at least? I think lots of answer for your question. It's a philosophical dilemma. The problem doesn't lie with you only. Well, the one simple technical answer is, if you make attendance strict, next day there will be full attendance. This I tried when I was a teacher in journalism, uh, when I was the head of the department of journalism. There were hardly five students in the classroom. One semester I detained almost 70 percent students for lack of attendance. Next semester there were 55 students in the classroom. And that was the batch which has 100 percent placements in media, even today. But uh, I don't believe in that kind of a system. So why should a student be forced to sit in my class? I, I don't, I don't uh, the theoretically, I don't philosophically believe in that. Well, that is a problem not only here. I taught at Bits Pilani, Hyderabad campus. There was also a similar problem. Not all students used to come. So if you make attendance mandatory, you are making student to come to the class. We don't know whether he is listening, whether he is thinking somewhere. We don't know what he is doing. So, 
that is a systemic problem where the education which we are imparting is not relevant to their advancement in life. But that may be true with some courses, but at least in my course, journalism, there is 100% placement opportunities. The person can earn a decent livelihood if he earns that skill, that knowledge, but still not coming. Well, you can do, you, the only way is to make the class attractive. You need make the syllabi relevant to the world they are living in. Their marks should reflect their real in, uh, in uh, academic uh, uh, learning. Today, there is no link between marks and intellectual ability. Um, uh, we, all of us know we start giving marks from 50 percent or 60 percent to begin. Otherwise, the next day, you know what will be their hala bowl. <laughs> so, all of us know this. So, it is a it, it requires systemic intervention, it requires intervention from teachers, from the administration, from policy, educational policy makers. I think it, there is no short cut answer to the problem which you are facing. Still, we have to do much more, but I am sure some of the things can improve, but beyond a point, it requires a much larger change. Sir, this is John Milton from Badrachalam. I put me to Matladina, someone in China, issue Grinchin and Matladan. It's a long question, sir. Fifteen years of teaching experience, Lana can pitch in a learning process, student learning process low. Yedo Manam miss out now and now is shining in Grahinchan, sir. In the Mundu, year wise guy exams one day, Tarathan and semester expose the Yantarathi Pudu, Rakarakala, Western modern Lakpothi, education uh, ever changing uh, uh, technological developments, the Pato, what in the education system of this Karagalik and Kani. Student Yoka behavioral attitude, aptitude, Ledente, uh, psychological, Ekodoman miss out Naman in Pistan, the learning process. Lo. Nenu students to chala close gavana pro while learning process lo while attitude towards the subject. Uh, learning process uh, the Netsukne Vidano Lakoda. Uh Nen feel a Nen Chadukne Tapu feel a next lesson name on today. Incote then incote this kuna and feel a yavan, let library in Kotta Visha and this kuna on a feel a yavan. If a students to Nenu Kalsi while a learning process Nen observe Jesnapudu, psychological guy attitude. Attitude, uh, attitude, behavioral uh, perspective, all of which in our world, how many miss out on our system, education system, lo, either na more puti sraala, a environment, ye do miss ayi ama anantla anpesande. Endu kante manapilal western lekapote vere desa pilal to police the manaval uh, intellectual game thakko kadhe kani atu ante vata varna ye do manu create chay lekapote na ma. Ante dhan ke mere anna prasna ko chala questions na hai. Okati. Our motivation student low like bottom. Chala mandi capable, but they are not motivated enough. In the kante mana system low, mana chala sandarbal low, valan tagis tunta. Ma my brother's son, when he was study, he study, he was studying in US. What medicine interest in the repet zepavani? Are medicine and the tech kunte, John Hopkins low no, Harvard low no tech kaval ranevani. Ma ne undin and titevadu. You know, the expectation better over a black of the frustrated Taloni. Pasto or other Tarvasangati can ease some Ashapada on the Muntel. Anyway, believe me, he is now graduated from the two medical schools, both John Hopkins and Harvard. Both. He rejected Harvard admission to join John Hopkins and then came back to Harvard to do his PG. And he is now, uh, so he has graduated, he, he studied from the world's two most the important medical schools in the world, the place where the world's greatest inventions in medicine have been done. So, so he has he has been he has he wrote for USA Today. The Fox TV interviewed him for uh, for some time. Time Magazine interviewed him. He just at the age of 30 years. So, well, will any everybody be motivated like that? Not at all. So we'll have to. Uh, sometimes my brother may also be true. If that kid work was not in a position to reach up to that level, there would have been some amount of frustration too. So we have to carefully motivate. Motivation has to be careful based on the levels of their achievement and levels of their ability 
everybody is not equal in abilities. So that is number one. So enough motivation is lacking in the children. Some of the, any goal you take me, 20 percent are self-motivated. Either teachers, students, employees, workers, anywhere in the world, 20 percent are self-motivated. Let nobody tell you they will do that. 20 percent are never motivated. Mere <laughs> about motivated gadu. Ika 60 percent change by the ecosystem. The ecosystem marte martha. Mere human nature hai. Manam bus stand lo bus rush ga ostundi. Yeh agite tappa rush lo rushu mani next bus se pras tu doantam. Bus se kena yeh mantam conductor antarau to nitmi le kichku doantam. Maname. So that is the human character. We react based on the system. So if we correct the ecosystem, I am sure a good number of students get motivated. That number one is motivation. Number two, there is a minute disconnect between what a student likes and what the student is asked to study. So what uh, very chala kodhimandi ki matra me vrutti ki, pravrutti ki, asakti ki madhe link kutta di. Chala mandi ki link kutta Nen ala nadrishtra mantra lo nena vanni. Naa kede ta abiricho adhe na vrutta indi, pravrutta indi. So adhi lena pade ema uttu indi ante frustration madhe lehti di. Naa ko chemistry ante chala ishtam ande di. Unfortunately engineering raka pote yodo ma father jepped BS electronics engineering to samana vanni. So, I got, I felt miserable. I did not read properly, I did not go to college. And that brought me to journalism. So, where I am really interested in. And the only thing is, problem is that the interest is not a match. And the match is not a match. The third thing is activity based learning. I have experience in the classroom lecture is the first time. Or seminar better than Muppe Mande ever. Man, me Anubo Vendor Nakili. Or discussion of seminar ante Muppe and Albe Mande ever. And the other man, a teaching method, methodology is not activity oriented. Where we teach for a classroom lo Kurchani, reporting and Jepin Danaki, well, if you feel me, Kelly, no Warthal Tiskara, Tiska Janaka classroom lo discuss Jedam and the Anki Chala Ted out. So our, our teaching learning model perhaps have to change. Fourth one is the teacher's ability to teach. If he, is, if he can link the world with classroom, and I think the class will be fascinating. We have to link the classroom with the world. Classroom with the world link chegalikte asakti karanga untundi. So a classroom ku world ku link chegalama. Classroom ku the world of interdisciplinary world of knowledge in classroom tiskaragalama. When you teach physics, can you bring in literature? When you teach mathematics, can you bring in philosophy? Because that, that is how the world has made top inventions. Where did zero come from? Mana zero can go come undo, the royal ante chala customer ever. An Indians invented zero from a philosophical and spiritual concept of shunyata. Shunyata ane concept e leka pote zero kankana walang kam. Enaka te ipudu bottu betti pilwala. Can you have an English word for that? Should I keep a tickle on your face and call it a cotton top? Hindu kle dhan English word u bottu betti pilse samskute leka pote padamundu. Illu alakadamu. Then ki English word jepandi. Throw the dung water on the floor and our kundi. And that e alaku chalana mane concept e leka pote English word etlu to gandi. So, the word comes from culture. Language comes from culture. And the Kibir Gaman in Chandi, English Walla Koke Uncle Untadu, Manaku Chinama, Pedama, Pedana, Chinana, Babai, Kaka, Manitamanuntadu. In the day, language is enriched by culture because we have a very strong family culture uh, extending to multiple relations. We have invented new, new words. In the Kate Intlo, నాలుగు 
ఇంకొని శ్యామ్ మామా అని అలసి వచ్చింది అన్న శ్యామ్ చిన్న అని అనాల్సి వచ్చింది అంటే నలుగురు ఇంటికి రావడం అనే కల్చర్ ఉండడం వల్ల మనకు నాలుగు రకాల పదాలు కనుక్కోవాల్సి వచ్చింది అన్న రైట్ లేదు ఎందుకు కనుక్కుంటావు కనుక్కో కదా అందరు అంకులు సార్ అయిపోతుంది సో అందువల్ల కల్చరు అనేది మీకు భాష నిర్ణయిస్తుంది సో ఆ రకంగా మనము అంటే ఒక మ్యాథమెటికల్ ఇన్వెన్షన్ను ఒక స్పిరిచువల్ అండ్ ఫిలాసఫికల్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఇన్స్పైర్ చేసిందంటే దట్ ఈజ్ ద లింక్ బిట్వీన్ నాలెడ్జెస్ బట్ మనం చెప్పగలుగుతున్నామా నేను మాకు న్యూస్ పేపర్లో మాకు జర్నలిజంలో ఒక కాన్సెప్ట్ ఉంటుంది ఇన్వర్టెడ్ పిరామిడ్ స్టైల్ అని అంటే వార్త ఎలా రాయాలి అన్నప్పుడు మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ ముందు రాయాలి లెస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ లాస్ట్కి రావాలి ఎందుకంటే సబ్ ఎడిటర్కు స్పేస్ లేకపోతే లాస్ట్ పేర కట్ చేస్తాడు అలా రాయక రివర్స్ రాస్తే ఆంధ్రజ్యోతిలో ఇదో తెలుగు పేపర్లో ఒకసారి జరిగింది నిజామాబాద్ జిల్లాలో కమల అనే వివాహిత స్త్రీ పైన అత్యాచారం జరిగింది ఆ రాసేవాడు బాగా ఇన్స్పైర్ అయిపోయి కలకంటి కన్నీరులకి ఇంట సిరి నిలిచిన ఎత్ర నర్యస్తు పూజ్యంతే రమంతే తత్ర దేవత అన్నారు అని అలా అలా రాస్తూ లాస్ట్ పేరాలో ఇరవై ఐదేళ్ళ కమల అనే వివాహిత స్త్రీపై అత్యాచారం జరిగింది ఈ సబ్ఎటర్ స్పేస్ లేక లాస్ట్ పేరా తీసిపడేసాడు నెక్స్ట్ డే పబ్లిష్ అయిన వార్తలో కలకంటి కన్నీరులకి ఇది కానీ కమల లేదు ఇది చెప్పాలి నేను న్యూస్ నేను ఏం చెప్పాను ఇక్కడ నన్ను తెలుగు మాస్తర్ అంటే తెలిసి ఉంటాం మొల్ల రామాయణంలో ఓ పద్యం తీసుకొని అద్భుతమైన పద్యం నాకు ఆ పద్యం గుర్తులేదు ఇప్పుడు ఆ పద్యం తీసుకొని ఆ పద్యంలో వర్ణించిన వర్ణనం తీసుకొని ఏది మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఎలా రాయాలో చెప్పాను సో ఎందుకంటే వాట్ మేక్స్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ ఐ స్టిల్ రిమెంబర్ అమరావతి టూ థౌజండ్ ఫోర్టీన్లో అమరావతి ఇనాగ్రేషన్ జగన్మోహన్ రెడ్డి వెళ్ళ వెళ్ళాలా వెళ్ళకూడదా ఇది చర్చ ఆయన వెళ్ళలేదు నన్ను విలేకరులు అడిగారు నేను ఏమో తప్పనిసరిగా వెళ్ళాలండి అది అమరావతి కదా భవిష్యత్తు రాజధాని కదా నీకు ఇష్టం ఉన్నా లేకపోయినా వెళ్ళాలి జగన్మోహన్ రెడ్డికి ఏమైనా వ్యతిరేకత ఉన్నా వెళ్ళాలి అని చెప్తే జనానికి ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ ఎంత ఉంటుంది నేనేమన్నానంటే శ్రీకృష్ణ రాయభారంలో శ్రీకృష్ణుడు ఒక మాట ఉంది సంధి కుదరదని తెలుసు సంధికి దుర్యోధనుడు అంగీకరించనురీ తెలుసు ఆయనను పొయ్యి రావాలను అస్తినకు జగన్ ఆయనను పొయ్యి రావాలను అమరావతికి అన్నాను ఎన్ని అభ్యంతరాలు ఉండి ఆయనను పొయ్యి రావాలని జగన్ అమరావతికి అన్నాను ఇప్పుడు చూడండి అంతకుముందు మీరు ఎవరు నవ్వాలి ఇప్పుడే నవ్వారు అంటే వాట్ మేడ్ బి ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ ఇది నేను ఎలా చెప్పగలిగాను ఇఫ్ ఐ న్యూ ఓన్లీ జర్నలిజం కెన్ ఐ టెల్ దిస్ బికాస్ ఐ ఆల్సో రెడ్ ఎపిక్స్ మహాభారతం చదివాను కనుక చెప్పగలిగాను సో ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ టెల్ దిస్ మల్టిపుల్ సైన్సెస్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ ఇఫ్ యూఆర్ టీచింగ్ మార్క్సిజం ఇన్ పొలిటికల్ థాట్ ఆర్ ఇఫ్ యూ టాక్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ సోషలిస్ట్ పొలిటికల్ మార్క్సిస్ట్ పొలిటికల్ థాట్ అయ్యా మార్క్సిజమే కాదు మహాభారతం కూడా అదే చెప్పింది విఘ్నేశ్వరుడు వినాయకుడు వేదవ్యాసుడు చెప్తుంటే రాస్తూ రాస్తూ అంటాడు వేదవ్యాసంతో ఏంద ఏంది కవ మీ మహర్షి మీ కవులకేం పని ఉండదు చాడభారతం చెప్తారు సింపుల్గా చెప్పరాదా ఇన్ని లక్ష శ్లోకాలలో చెప్పాలా అన్నాడు ఒక్క అంటే ఒక్క శ్లోకాలు చెప్పరాడు ఒక్కటేమిటి వినాయక అర శ్లోకంలో చెప్తాను ఒక్క మహాభారత సారాన్నే కాదు సర్వ శాస్త్రాల సారాన్ని చెప్తాను అని అర శ్లోకంలో చెప్తాడు పరోపకారాయ పుణ్యాయ పాపాయ పరపీడనం అంటాడు పరోపకారాయ పుణ్యాయ పాపాయ పరపీడనం మీరు వాట్ ఇట్ మార్క్స్ తెల్ మార్క్స్ ఇజమ్ ఆల్సో సెట్ దెర్ షుడ్ నాట్ బి ఎనీ ఎక్స్ప్లాయిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాన్ బై మ్యాన్ నేషన్ బై నేషన్ ఒక వర్గం మరో వర్గాన్ని అణచివేయకూడదు దోపిడీ చేయకూడదు పరపీడనం సో ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ ఇంటర్లింక్ డిఫరెంట్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆఫ్ సైన్స్ డిఫరెంట్ బ్రాంచెస్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ దట్ మేక్స్ ద క్లాస్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ అల్టిమేట్లీ ఇట్ ద క్లాస్ క్లాస్ విన్న తర్వాత చిరంజీవి ఫ్యాన్ చిరంజీవి సినిమా చూస్తే ఎంత ఉత్సాహంగా బయటకు వస్తారో అట్లా బయటకు రావాలి అది నిజమైన టీచర్ అంటే టీచర్ క్లాస్ అయినాక రెండు గంటలు కాదు మూడు గంటలు క్లాస్ చెప్పాక ఎంజాయ్మెంట్తో రిఫ్రెషింగ్ మైండ్తో అబ్బా మెగా స్టార్ సినిమా చూసినా అని మెగా ఫ్యాన్ ఫీల్ అయినట్టు ఉండాలి అలా ఉండక అమ్మా సావు కొట్టిండ్రా మళ్ళీ రేపు కూడా ఉన్నదా క్లాస్ అనుకుంటే వెళ్ళాడు అనుకోండి సో అయితే ఇవన్నీ చేసినా కూడా స్టూడెంట్కి ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఉంటుందా నేను చెప్పాను కదా ఇరవై శాతం వాళ్ళు ఉంటారు కదా నువ్వు ఏం చేసినా ఉండవు వాడు జడ పదార్థం తీరియ వినర్షియాన్ని వదిలేయాలి అలాంటి వాళ్ళు ఓకే
sir. Um, one one last question from my side, sir. So and with this, we'll conclude. Here. Yeah, I know, sir. But I have one question. There is a very popular saying in Indian culture that Guru Devo Bhava or Acharya Devo Bhava. So over the years, I have, I mean, from my childhood till now, I am uh, looking at the past and the journey I have made and also I ended up as an academician now. I have seen that the value or the, uh, I mean, the respect, the due respect that we used to give earlier for a guru or an acharya as a teacher has deteriorated completely. In fact, it is evaded, I should say that. What could be the reason, sir, basically in India, if I observe that? And uh, the problem comes, there are two ways of looking at it. One way is, what do you mean by a value? So, uh, we have to define, it has been more democratized. Well, my father used to tell me, Are men ma tata the mananda gri poval and a bipara valam rani. My father used to be scared to even talk to my grandfather. That was stage one, first generation. Second generation, I used to speak to my father without fear. Tani, when the argument reaches a stage, I never used to speak a word. My father is no, no more, but my mother is still there. Even today, I don't speak anything against my mother. Ippad gudwa. So, one dashavar kargu yas thamatoni. Final ga, our word prevails. We'll keep quiet. We may not agree with her, but we'll keep quiet. My brother is just two years older to me. Argu yas tham. But where at a, at a point comes where with the discussion ends, I'll keep quiet. So, this is the second generation. <coughs> Third generation, my son, Nana ni tappu. I don't agree with your uh, uh, argument at all. I don't understand, I don't accept, I don't expect from you, Antad. This is third generation. Fourth generation, my granddaughter came. I was serious, 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 I was serious. This is another generation. So, I was just telling you. <laughs> so, but I am equally happy with all generations. So, mana generation is intent, mana payolog by padang, kindolog by padasasta, that is the problem. Mana is sandwich generation. Pedolog by padang, kindolog by padang. Well, that is one value. A day value is not, is, is not the same forever. So, it undergoes a change. If it was Ramalakshman Lalaga, mana, if it brothers, undu want to sadimetada. So, each according to the age, the values change. So, the relation between teacher and student have been immensely democratized, which is a positive change. Second change, well, the relationship has got lumpenized for a host of reasons. The reasons are on both sides. The teacher should may be responsible for certain things. And the students are also equally responsible for certain things. If the teacher still is a man of eminence, if a teacher is a person of outstanding knowledge, if a teacher is a person with enormous commitment, still the teacher is largely respected. But no guarantee that he will be respected. No guarantee. But it is still largely respected. If not, now he will be respected after 10 years at least. Once the fellow enters into life, he is respected. So, once he enters into life, and I always tell, whether I am a good teacher or bad teacher is not determined by the respect which a student shows to me in the classroom. The, the real test is, if I meet him in a railway station or an airport, if the student is coming back to me, Sir, I know, me student, Sam, Sir, me student, that is the respect. I suppose if he has no respect for me, so I am a VD class student and I am a VD class student. So ultimately after 10 years, if you meet your student in the railway station or airport, if the student comes to me with his spouse and says, Sir, I was your student, then that is the greatest recognition to a teacher. So ultimately respect is not defined and determined in the classroom per se. But when the student joins the life, if he can realize the importance of a teacher, then, but still, in the Kalikalam, when Samasal had a good time. So, human values are redefined. No two relationships are like, are similar than what it was past. 
I am sure the fraternal relations have undergone change, the relation between parent and child, the relation between wife and husband, the relation between teacher and student, the relationship between a friend, two friends. Well, everything has changed. Why only teacher, student? No, no, it is up to you. No problem. Madam. As they have asked uh, the uh, respect, dignity of a teacher and students are going down. Uh, and the, uh, I think, sir, as you have started with the Newton's laws, the action and reaction, both are equal and opposite. And uh, <laughs> what we are giving to our students, that we are getting the same. So, it is true to a great extent, but there is also leakage. Wonderful, inspiring teacher need not be respected by every student. Am I right? And don't expect that also. Why should we expect? So, we, are our, we don't need certificate from anybody, including student. So, no, no need. Well, Ultimately, you are respected by your contribution to the society, knowledge. You are not respected by the promotions. You are not respected by students also. Ultimately, the history will recognize you. Society will recognize you. So, that should be the approach. Well, forget about all the other things. So, when I was a teacher, I was a student and I was a respect to the BP. So, I was a teacher. Sometimes, Bhagavad Gita will serve you. కర్మములు చేయడం వరకే నీవంతు ఫలితమును ఆశించకు అయినను కర్మములు చేయడం మానకు సో యూ కంటిన్యూ టు డూ వాట్ యూ డూ అస్ ఎ టీచర్ సో యూ డోంట్ ఎక్స్పెక్ట్ ద రిజల్ట్ బట్ దజన్ మీన్ యూ విల్ నాట్ యూ విల్ స్టాప్ ఫ్రమ్ డూయింగ్ ఇట్ వెల్ యూ కెన్ ఆల్వేస్ డూ వాట్ యూ హర్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ ఎక్స్పెక్టెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ యూ అబ్సల్యూట్లీ డోంట్ వారీ హౌ వాట్ విల్ బీ ద రివార్డ్ నథింగ్ విల్ హ్యాపెన్ నథింగ్ విల్ హ్యాపెన్ Ultimately, we are answerable to ourselves. We are answerable to our values. We don't need certificate from anybody. That, should, my, that is my approach, I, whether you agree with me or not. I don't care what the world talks about me. I am more worried about what every day night, I should, when I sleep, I, I am answerable to myself. Am I correct? Am I, uh, did I do my job properly today? Well, that's the only uh, only test which I have, which I put for myself. 